Good evening, everybody. Uh, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. A very warm welcome to all saints this evening for our carol service. We're delighted that we're able to join together. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. We hope that something of the joy and peace of the Christ child will touch your hearts whilst you're here this evening. Uh, the service is about to get underway, as you can tell, as the lights go out, and it will, um, it will carry on unannounced, uh, so we won't make any announcements during the service, uh, but if the congregation would stand uh, for the congregational carols and sit for the readings and the choir pieces, that would be great. At the end of the service, refreshments are going to be served, but they'll be served outdoors uh, so do please leave the church after the service and enjoy some social time outside in the fresh air. But for now, as uh, the lights dim and we focus on the candlelight, we uh, begin our service with Once in Royal David City, which is number four on your carol sheet. And the first two verses will be sung by the choir.
please be seated. My brothers and sisters, in the name of Christ, I welcome you. We have come together as Christmas draws near to prepare for our celebration of the birth of God's beloved Son. Through the days of Advent, we have followed the light of Christ, and now we travel in spirit with Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem to acclaim with the multitude of the heavenly hosts the coming of the Prince of Peace. Through scripture and silence, prayer and song, let us hear again the wonderful story of our redemption. And hearing, let us rejoice and respond with lively faith. But first, as we gather together in the name of Christ, let us pray for the world he came to save. Let us pray for the church that bears his name, that it may be enabled in our generation to surrender anew to God's holy wisdom and bear the good news of God's love to a needy world. Let us pray for the world, that all its peoples may recognize their responsibility for its future and may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom, and peace everywhere. Let us pray for all in special need, the sick, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful, the heartbroken, and the bereaved that the peace and light of the Christ child may bring hope and healing to all who sit in darkness. In a moment of silence now, we commend all whom we love, all who have asked for our prayers, to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father. And we say together, as Christ himself taught us, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The birth of the king is foretold. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The peaceful kingdom is described a shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, 
or decide by what his eyes hear, his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the wean child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The angel speaks to Joseph. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The angel appears to Mary. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your rel relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God, then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Please be seated. You've got a bonus one tonight. We'll, we'll hear our next two readings and then we'll sing Silent Night. You can't have too many carols. Thank you, Joe. The birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. An angel appears to the shepherds. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who, who, whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger.
Please be seated. I wonder if you can tell which of the following news reports is not true. Firstly, uh, a report that the Pope has had to intervene because the European Commission was trying to cancel Christmas. <laughs> Second report, evidence has been uncovered uh, that proves that Jesus played cricket as a young boy. <laughs> or the third report, Bethlehem has been put on the red travel list and as a result there are no virgin flights to Bethlehem. <laughs> And even if you got there, there'd be no Zoom at the inn. Oh. Uh, any guesses which is the untrue one? Of course, it's number three. The third one is the funniest, of course, but it's not true. The first two uh, were real headlines, but actually the reality behind the headline is not quite as sensational as the sub-editors would have us believe. So there was a document that suggested when talking about events happening at this time of year across Europe, one shouldn't assume necessarily that everyone was celebrating Christmas, and of course that's quite true. It's a far cry from cancelling Christmas outright. Similarly, some manuscripts have been uncovered in the desert uh, which talk about a game that involved a ball and some kind of a bat. And indeed, uh, someone by the name of Jesus uh, is mentioned in this manuscript. Whether Jesus was turning out at Lord's, I think, is still to be confirmed. These are amusing anecdotes, amusing reports which, thankfully, have little real impact on our faith or our daily lives, whether they're true or not. But the task of discerning who and what to believe is a genuine challenge of our times, isn't it? Particularly in such a, a connected world where news travels around the world at the click of a button, whether it's false or true where institutions and great offices that we once deemed innately trustworthy call into question our loyalty when their lack of integrity is exposed. Deciding who and what to trust and believe is not easy. And even when the news is true, at the moment it seems that there's not much of it that's good. But as we sit here tonight, and as I speak to you, I want to say that there is reliable, trustworthy hope, and that there is good news to be, have and to be had, and we have heard it recanted in each of our readings and in our music tonight. There is hope that inspired Isaiah 700 years or so before Christ, to paint a picture, to broadcast a message of a just and peaceful kingdom with a wise and compassionate ruler that would come to pass. There are the angels, the news anchors of their day, who spoke words of challenge but also comfort to Joseph and to Mary. There's the heavenly host filling the skies of the universe quicker than a viral tweet with a message of hope to the least, the lost, the marginalized. And in all of those messages, in all of that news, two things in common. Do not be afraid. 
I bring you good news. The birth of Christ in Bethlehem is a good news event. Christ himself is good news for humankind. He is truth. He is light. He is peace. Well, that's all very well, you may say. What difference does this good news make to me, to my family, to this country, this world at the moment? The Archbishop of Canterbury had something to say about that this week when he was interviewed for the newscast programme on Radio 4. He was talking about his time in the height of the lockdowns working as a hospital chaplain at St Thomas's, just next to where he lives in London. He was asked by the interviewer, what exactly is it that you say to people when you're holding their hands and looking into their eyes as they live their last hours. And the Archbishop replied and said that there were three things he felt it was important to do. First, to be honest about the tragedy that was befalling the individual, the family. Second, to join in with integrity, with authenticity, with their feelings, whatever they may be, feelings of protest, of anger, to say, yes, this hurts. This is not how God would want things to be. And thirdly, to commit that person into God's care, into a care and an embrace that is bigger than the world's problems. This seems to be the good news that Jesus offers this Christmas and always, that in the face of unspeakable and unavoidable, it seems, tragedy, in the face of uncertainty and anger, in the face of loss, he is constant, he is true, and the light he brings, the darkness cannot even understand, let alone overcome. It is a light that is with us by our sides through the darkest times. In the new year, we will be hosting some groups across the three churches in our patch here where there will be a chance to explore a bit more deeply some of these questions. What is the good news, who can we trust? How do we make sense of this mad world that we are living in? You've got a little flyer with your service booklet tonight and if you would be interested to hear more details of what's involved, do put your email address and leave that as you go this evening. Jesus is good news this Christmas and always. Do not be afraid. I bring you news, good news of great joy for all people. Christ is born in Bethlehem. God is with us. Alleluia. Amen.
light shines in the darkness. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the world and the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a father, father's only son, full of grace and truth.
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill your hearts and your homes with his light and peace and grace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, those for whom you pray this Christmas tide and always. Amen. <laughs> 